All right, hey there folks. We're under the hood of the dirty 5.4 liter here on the 2000 Ford Expedition. Just want to show you what I've done real quick. Um, so I've replaced the, the battery terminals here, the lugs. That way I could go to, a, I could put terminals on here. I'll show you the factory ones in a minute, why I had to change them. This is all two gauge, American made, 100% copper welding wire. This stuff's $4 a foot. So this is the factory ne uh, negative connections. I left it there, I just cut it. I had enough room, put a copper lug on it. This down here is your factory positive connections right there. I left it, I just connected the two positives over to this four gauge, ran it up here. Uh, the way I did this was I took a piece of copper pipe. I keep various pieces in the garage and I can, you know, use my hydraulic crimper and crimp them. And then I just put some uh, heavy duty 3M heat shrink over it. All this heat shrink has the um, adhesive lined walls, as you can see. So, Here's a negative I've added here, two gauge. You can see it's running down to the engine right here to a ground point. And then I also have it coming off going down to the chassis. You can see it going over that way there. And it's actually bolted to the chassis right down there. So that takes care of the negative. So here's the positive. Positive here runs. Let's see. Nope. Uh, sorry. Here's a positive. Positive here runs, and you can see where it goes. It goes directly to the alternator lug. And I did leave the existing alternator charging line on there as well. So that basically comes up here. You can follow it real easy. It goes right up here to the starter solenoid lug. And then from there it runs over. Here's your factory wiring. comes up here. I left that because it does have fusible links right there. So I wanted to leave that in place. So basically I left all the factory charging stuff in place and I've just added over it. And um, this thing is rock solid now. I can idle at 650, 700 RPM and key that one by four at night with the headlights on and there's absolutely no voltage drop. This thing is solid now. Um, I did use a four gauge running back to the amp. If I had to redo it, I'd use the same two gauge welding wire but this seems to be working fine. Um, I do have a more heavy duty um, fuse coming, that I'll, a whole fuse holder coming, but for now that's working great. So that's how I've upgraded this thing. And even with the stock alternator, it's rock solid now. This upgrade has helped so much. I'm about to do the F-150 here in a second. So I've got the F-150 here in the garage, and I'm going to do the same exact thing to it. I bought, bought more welding wire. But let me show you what I'm talking about, about those battery lugs. Here is the positive, here is the negative. You can see what style they are. They're just your standard factory, you know, style here. And this positive, I have cleaned this so many times over the years. Wire brushed it. I've used baking soda and water on it. And it doesn't matter what I do. Within six months, all this nasty stuff just comes right back on it. And it actually, you know, got into the wire a little bit. You can see some of it in there. In 191's truck, it was much worse. It had really gotten into his. But, um, yeah, so that's why I cut that out and spliced it like I did. Um, plus, I mean, you really can't hook a big gauge wire on that. There's really no good way. So... Here's the welding wire I used right here. This stuff's $4 a foot. You can see it's double insulated. It's super fine strand, 100% copper right there. There's no aluminum in that. So here's the first uh, insulator over it. And then here's the second insulator. I mean, this stuff's made to be, you know, drug on the ground and driven over and everything else. So I wanted something good under my hood and it, it was worth it um you know it's not like 
this other wire they sell like these uh these jumper cables for example you know it looks like all copper wiring see that and i'm not knocking on the aluminum because that's what i've got running back to the amp is the aluminum uh uh um, aluminum copper coated wire I think it, it'll work but I just want to show you the difference this is that same exact jumper cable right here look look when you cut it though you can see it's aluminum see and they put the copper color on the outside I'm not saying it's bad I mean we've got aluminum wiring running to our homes you know it's fine but you can pick you know literally 50 foot of, of a um of a two gauge wire up that's the aluminum uh copper clad or whatever you want to call it and you pick 10 feet of this stuff up this is heavier this is some heavy duty stuff right here so i figured i'd just go ahead and do it right put out the four dollars a foot you know and then i said you know i made that splice um so basically i just keep some copper pipe here a different size and i'll just cut it whatever you know whatever size i need you know put the wire in one end hydraulically crimp it with my hydraulic crimper did the same to the other if you shrink around it it's good to go um there in this one here you know then i've got all the different lugs or whatnot to hydraulically crimp on the ends there uh harbor freight's a good place to get them if you if you can't get them online i mean they're you know they're 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 three bucks for two of them. They're a lot cheaper online, but still they have them. The two piece for their welding stuff that works. But these ones here are a little too big. These are a little too small. Here's the uh, heat shrink I used. You can see it's 3M. I mean that is some heavy. Look at my finger fits in there. That is some heavy duty, th really thick stuff. It's adhesive lined, and when you shrink it down, it shrinks down uh, four four times its size. So I think it'll go all the way down to like a eight or a six gauge. This stuff really, and it just gets thicker as it shrinks down, and that adhesive grabs on and just creates a you know watertight environment there for it. Then I got the smaller stuff here. Same thing, adhesive lined. It's worked real well. Um, yeah, so that's what I use there. And certain folks online will show one of these and make you think it's like a $300 tool that you can't afford. But in all reality, guys, these are like 40 bucks on eBay. And this is a total game changer. Here's your hydraulic uh, crimper right here. And I believe this is, okay, it says it's a 10 ton, 10 ton of force. This thing kicks butt. Or it's just like a hydraulic jack. You know, there's your release right there. You tighten it, pump it up jaws close or the the ram comes up here's your dies right here different size dies um, i do find on this tool sometimes you know i'll have to use one size and if it doesn't get it quite quite tight enough i'll have to go down to the next it'll leave little like wings on the edge of it but that's no big deal you just take a file and just i file it down and then heat shrink it and uh i guarantee you the wire is going to rip before you get it out out of one of th those connectors with this this for 40 bucks that's the tool right there guys ebay or amazon they've got them at least when i got this one they were 40 bucks i can't see them being much more than that total game changer right there though and here we are under the hood of my f-150 yeah guys i don't i don't clean this one it looks pretty it's just dust but um i'm about ready to do this one as well you know this one's set up a little oh hood latch this one's set up a little bit different where the the fusible links are up high, really close here. So I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to do that. The the Expedition, they were down lower, so I had a lot more, you know, uh, I had a lot more to work with. You can see that corrosion I'm talking about. They all get it. It doesn't matter how many times you clean it. I mean, you can see it's not an old battery. So what I'm going to have to do here. So I'm going to have to go to those other style of lugs and um, I'm going to have to get this connected to, to the new lug. So, yeah, I'm probably going to have to cut here and use one of those copper pipes and make a, uh, actually, 
I may have enough if I just put a lug on it. I just don't like things to be too tight like that. So we'll see. I'll probably probably cut it, extend it a couple inches. That way I got a little room here, you know, a little bit to play with. And then the ground, I'm going to have to do the same thing to the ground over there. And then I'll go ahead and just, you know, run an extra ground like I did to the other one. Right down to a good ground point on there, down to the chassis. And then we'll go over to the alternator because it's the same alternator. But I just want to show you without it being done, you know. So. Yeah, that'll work. Alright, thanks for watching.